All right, guys, I just found like probably three or four pound bass up against the wall. We're gonna start with the head hunter. Go big. There's tail. Oh! It broke me off. Oh, oh, no, 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 he is back. Oh. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to today's video. So we are out and about today trying to find the pre-spawn bite and uh, really just trying to teach you guys all about the pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn three stages of bass fishing for the spawn season and uh, kind of just showing you guys what baits I prefer to use, what techniques I prefer to use, and uh, just what to look for when you are getting out trying to find these pre-spawn, spawning, and post-spawn bass. Uh, usually typically during uh, March uh, all the way through May, a little bit later on sometimes depending on your location uh, and depending on water temperatures, you're going to have the bass going through a spawn season. Uh, they're going to be doing a pre-spawn, a spawn, and then a post-spawn and uh, basically they're, they're kind of self-explanatory. So basically pre-spawn is right before the spawn. They like to get a lot of big meals, start finding their mates, hunker down in the bed and uh, kind of just hang out, wait for that actual spawn time to get going. Uh, and then you have the spawn season where the uh, males and the females start to group together and uh, sit in the beds and uh, go through their whole uh, you know, reproductive process and uh, eventually start having babies, which is the post-spawn when uh, the males usually just kind of sit uh, in the nest and protect the young uh, while the females get back out there and start eating again. Uh, so we'll be talking all about the stages of the spawn season for bass, uh, what lures you want to use, what techniques you want to use, and uh, how you can kind of increase your hookup and maybe even increase your PB this year. All right, guys, so we got Peppers, the puppy, joining us today on our little fishing adventure. Everybody say hi to Peppers. What's going on, everybody? Make sure you like and subscribe to the video. Let's catch some fish. All right, y'all heard it from Peppers officially. <laughs> like, subscribe, and uh, let's catch some fish. First, let's talk about what we're tossing today. So I got three different setups with me, and uh, I will be going over everything about these setups because they are very special uh, to exactly the technique that I'm gonna be using today. So we got our swim bait set up right here. I'm going big with this guy. Come on, Peppers, calm down. <laughs> going big with this guy, basically trying to target the really, really big bass. Uh, and it's got 20 pound Seaguar fluoro, so the line sinks a lot easier. We got that rugged, heavy duty aluminum reel so we can really lock down on those bigger bass, not have any sort of bending or uh, any sort of issues with the reel itself. It is gonna be a one to four ounce heavy action swim bait rod. And uh, that's basically what we're gonna be tossing the 10,000 fish head hunter on. It's a bluegill imitation, as you can see. It's gonna really mimic those bluegills sneaking up in the beds. If you do see the big bass, sometimes they won't be biting. Uh, they're, they're pretty familiar with the spawn. They've gone through this quite often. And uh, you'll notice sometimes you gotta trick them up a little bit more with bigger baits, more natural looking baits. And that's when this thing is gonna come in handy. Uh, you get that head hunter popping right in there in the water, even glide baits, uh, Gantrail Jr., stuff like that. They work really good this time of the season. Uh, so that's gonna be our first setup that we're using, big swim bait, looking for the big fish. Second setup, which is gonna be probably the best for the pre-spawn. So the last lure, last setup that I showed you will probably work uh, through the entire stages, all three stages. Uh, we'll talk more about it, you know, when we're out there in the water. But as far as this setup goes, this is gonna be the best for the pre-spawn. It's just gonna be easy, kind of punching and uh, pissing off the bass. So we got a little Texas rig. We're just gonna put a craw on there, try to flip it right into their beds and just agitate them, just continuously knock those claws up and down. And we got a quarter ounce weight. We got 40 pound braid on there, just making sure that we got that straight solid action in case when you get that hook set in there, we got a four aught Guggen hammer hook. And uh, we're gonna be tossing it with a 10,000 fish saw craw. So we're going 10,000 fish today as far as the soft plastics go. And we're tossing this on the Guggen Go To, which is gonna be a seven foot uh, medium heavy fast action rod. And uh, this is gonna be my Shimano Sitka 200 40 pound braid. Uh, so we got two 200 setups. All right, last but not least guys, we got the Cast King setup, which is going to be my jerk bait setup. It is a six foot six uh, medium action setup. We got 15 pound fluoro on there. So the lure sinks a lot lower in the water. And we have the a uh, little junior scout in there. So basically with this lure, what I do is I like to just get it right in front of the fish when uh, these other two lures fail me. 
This jerk bait works really, really good at just staying right in front of them, suspending right in front of their face and really pissing off and agitating the fish. So it makes the fish very territorial and uh, they can't really resist it because it's suspending right in front of their face. They have to strike at it and uh, get it out of their bed. We got two trouble hooks on there with the sticky hooks uh, and these things are very, very deadly. I actually got one in my knuckle the other day and it was uh, quite fun. Uh, but enough talking about these setups, guys. Let's go ahead and get them out on the water. I already see a few fish kind of hugged up on the walls. We'll talk all about the pre-spawn right now. We're going to start with the craw and that Texas rig and just start flipping into these beds and uh, show you guys what we're talking about. And if you guys aren't familiar with uh, rigging the craw on the little Texas rig, I'll show you real quick. Just go down and through with the hammer hook. Straight out. Come all the way through. Rotate your hook. Then back up through the belly, get that craw at a 90 degree angle, and go straight through it. There we go. And then we bring it right back and go flat. And that's it. Simple, easy, and effective. All right. So first thing we'll do, like I said, is just flip this craw around and uh, put my backpack down so the dog doesn't run off with me attached to her. And what we're doing is looking for real shallow spots along the bank over there. Usually bed fish or bass when they're bedding up, you can see just the tip of their tail, the black uh, spot on their tail or the black lines on their tail and then the lateral uh, stripe on their uh, body actually. So I think I see a few tails over there. We're gonna go ahead and drop that craw right down real quick. Finesse it, see if it does anything. Just keep walking the bank. I see a lot of rocky little areas but I don't see any shadows in them. That's what we're looking for right now. We got some shadow right over here. Polaroid lenses are really, really important during this time of the year. All right, we're just gonna keep on moving, try to find some more up against the bank because this angle that I'm at is just spooking them every time it hits the water. So we got two bass right here actually fighting over one bed. You guys probably can't see them. Maybe now you can see them, but they're right there by that tree trunk. And uh, they're just going in circles around each other, basically just circling, trying to fight for this bed. Or they might even be getting into that mating season. I can't really tell if it's a male and a female. Yeah, it is a male and a female. Okay, yeah, they are about to spawn, like going in, like getting ready to mate. This is crazy. You don't see this a lot. Actually, I've never seen this personally. But uh, this is the type of process I was talking about. You got the preseason when they're actually getting in the beds, find, trying to find a mate. You got the actual spawn season when they're finding a mate. They just circle the beds nonstop. And uh, this is the easiest time to pick them off. And uh, it, it's kind of sad, but you can take one, uh, you know, pop the other one back in the water, and that other one will still be in the bed. You can go back for it too. Uh, that's kind of why it's fun. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of a little messed up. But I love the pre-spawn because you can catch so many huge fish. If I throw the craw, they won't go for that because it's gonna just make some noise and piss them off and they're gonna just spook and run. So I'm gonna go big first because they do look like some decent sized fish. We'll go with the headhunter first. Uh, and if that doesn't do nothing, then we'll definitely go with the uh, jerk bait next. All right, we got this headhunter. I'm gonna try to rock it. They looked at it, but they didn't seem to care. I mean, that's a good thing and a bad thing. All right, then we we're just gonna keep wandering around. These two have disappeared on me, so I guess the last thing I did was spook them, so that's not good. But uh, at least we know that they're starting to Hair up. All right, guys. I just found like probably three or four pound bass up against the wall. We're gonna start with the head hunter. Go big. Oh, oh, oh. he's trying it. Oh, this bass is going after it, man. All right battery had died. Let's get this headhunter back in this bed. Ooh, there he goes. 
Ooh. He's just hitting it. Might have to put on something like a DRT. He won't put up the whole thing in his mouth. He's moving it. It's crazy. Freaking fish is moving it, but won't eat it. There it goes. All these headhunters are going to be great for all of spawn season. <laughs> this fish is so pissed, I love it. And there's just a turtle right in front of it watching the whole damn thing. Damn turtle. He's like, I got the best view in the house. Oh, there we go. He hit it. I just don't want to set the hook on him. Let's see if we can get this damn thing to bite. I think we'll get it right here. I just don't want to uh, lay the hook set on him if he's not going to actually take it. I might need to put a trailer hook on it or something. It's the only good thing about this thing is it's got that bright orange tail. Oh! It broke me off, but I saw it drop it right there. I can see the lure. Wow. <gasps> Damn, I lost a huge fish right there. Oh, uh, and there's big potential that uh, he won't come back for it. But you know what I'm gonna do? Try at him with the crawl now. Hit him with the crawl. Yeah, he's out. Oh, oh, no, 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 he is back. Oh my god, he's back with a vengeance. He hit that crawl and took off. Oh my god. He is back with a vengeance, man. I just wish that I could find uh, my headhunter. I'll definitely toss on it and try to get it back. I'm just missing this hook set over and over and over. All right, I'm gonna have to walk away from this fish for a little bit. All right, I got a good feeling about this time. Oh yeah. Hey, leave it alone. I knew it. I knew it. Oh man. After messing with me, stealing my headhunter, and taking off with it, I got this fish. I got him. It's a male too. It looked a lot bigger from up top, but dude, that is still a really, really solid two pound, maybe even a little bit bigger. Look, it's pissing. Big old stomach on this guy. Awesome, awesome fish. Let's go ahead and uh, get him unhooked, get him back in the water. Look at him, just keeps pissing. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go right now. Awesome, awesome fish. Gonna try to get him right back on his bed. Hell yeah. Go back and look for my headhunter. Sometime I'll come back with my magnet weight. Right back on his bed. Yes! Yes! It looks like crawfish action is going to be the way to go still right now for some of these ones up here solo at least when they're paired up uh, you're going to want bigger fish bait fish stuff like that to come up in the bed unfortunately we broke off our headhunter um, and the only other big fish baits that i got might be too big um, so i'm going to kind of just stick to the craw for right now and if i do see something 
like, you know, worthy of tying on a swim bait, I will definitely put on a swim bait. I got a uh, Huddlestone gill, and I got a few different things, like a contender, I got a, uh, a prop duster glide bait, I got a um, DRT clash, I got a few different things that we can toss, but in the meantime, we're just going to keep on tossing the cross setup, see if we can't get a few more, show you guys what this spot and bite's about. I'm just gonna dangle real quick at this one. I think he will uh, go for it too, if it's still there. Oh, I already got hit. I got hit on the weight of the freaking thing. He is picking at it like crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a solid one. That's the one we're going for. Hey. Dude, that's like a four pounder. Three at least. Let's get a real quick weight on it. Crazy, crazy belly. What it's doing, ooh, this is actually a male. You can tell it's a male because it's got that smaller mouth. Males have that smaller mouth. And uh, you can see its belly is already starting to get the rub marks from staying up on those spawn beds. It's gotta be at least, say three pounds. I'm not even gonna weigh it though. I'm just gonna get it back in the water. Looks like. We got a nice hook set in the rear for the mouth. So, get on a hook real quick. Probably looking at maybe two, three and a half pounds, maybe four. Nothing over four for sure. There he goes. Oh, man, it's always hard sometimes when you get these fish hooked. But uh, one thing I always try to do to make sure that we release these guys safely and right back where we got them, especially during this pre-spawn spawn season because they're already going through a lot of stress and uh, fighting with each other for these females. Not to mention, a lot of times uh, what happens is these females, that's why they're usually the bigger fish, is because after the spawn, the males will still fight each other and uh, almost kill each other usually. Sometimes that's why you only get males going about two, three, four pounds before they actually die off because they've been through, you know, X amount of spawns and uh, really puts a wear and tear on their bodies and eventually kills them. So that's why female bass are usually the bigger ones. And uh, we we'll hear you guys. We we'll hear you. That's why you really want to make sure you're doing your part during this pre-spawn, post-spawn, and spawn season uh, to make sure that you're taking care of these fish. Try not to use any baits that are going to really cause any harm. Try not to break off. Uh, or use a really light line that's going to break off, you know, things that can potentially really harm these fish and, uh, you know, cause even more stress <clears throat> and uh, cause even more stress than what they're already going through, you know, fighting with each other and just dealing with the elements of being a bass. So, got another one on the saw craw today. It seems like that's the way to go, just flipping that craw in there and pissing them off. We're going to keep on wandering around, see if we can't get maybe one more, call it a day. All right, guys, I actually found the little bed that he's sitting on. Ooh. He did not like it when I dropped it in his bed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's the trick. That was the trick. Dropping it right in his bed. I just grabbed all my stuff to keep on moving. And then we get him. And then we get him. Probably another really solid, I'd say two to three pounder. What do you guys think? Probably two to three pounds. I has got a lot bigger mouth than the last one. Perfect hook set. Didn't hurt him anywhere. Ran that cheek plate. Let's get a real quick picture. Get him back in the water. Let's put this puppy right back down on its bed. Ugh. Right back in those trees. Alrighty, everybody. So that is going to be it for the video today. 
Uh, kind of just going over that whole spawn process. The saw crawl was killing it out there. Black and blue was just uh, really, really standing out and uh, making those fish very aggressive and uh, you know enticing that bite, which is what we want to do during that spawn season. As you guys can see behind me, we are finally in the house. Got the move going on. I can't wait to show you guys this entire house, the studio that we got going on, and all the new adventures that are going to come with it. A lot of kayak modification videos, a studio uh, modification video, all my bait, all my poles, all that stuff is coming in the future. So if you guys are as excited as I am, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can be a part of all the future videos. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for watching, everybody. Shout out to Peppers. See you guys next time, though. Peace.